next young man that I'm gonna bring up, he also treats me like I'm a senior citizen too, but that's good. Because I remember when his mom told me that he was gonna be running for office. And she said, James T, will you cut this commercial for me? I said, no, no, no. You should cut this commercial. And anybody who ever heard this commercial that was cut for this gentleman will remember these words. Run, Kendrick, run. Let me tell you something. James T, ladies and gentlemen, is an outstanding individual. I know we know him as the radio personality that has been on the air for a number of years, WEDR, making things happen, Hot 105 making things happen, informing the community, but he really cares. He's one of the most positive individuals I've ever met. How are you doing today, City of Miramar? Okay. <laughs> I won't have you do that again. But um, it's an honor being here, and this is an outstanding day, because I travel back and forth from Washington, D.C., back here to South Florida, and I can tell you, if you were in Washington, D.C., if you were in Philadelphia, if you were in Boston, you couldn't afford to be out here um, with shoulders exposed, with shorts on, um, enjoying this outstanding weather. So location, location, location. I want to thank the city for first not finding it robbery to put on this outstanding event to commemorate not only Black History Month, but those that made this month possible. And when I say those that made this month possible, I'm not talking about the individuals that you might see um, in your history books. I'm not talking about those individuals that, um, that started institutions of higher learning like historical black colleges. I'm not talking about federal judges, Congress individuals, or elected officials, or members of the clergy. I'm talking about people of goodwill. Black History Month is about the achievement of not only all of us in the black community, but also, I must add, people of goodwill. And what I wanted to talk to you about today, and I know you've had quite a few folks to speak to you and more to come. As I start preparing for my short discussion today, and I won't be a visiting preacher saying I'm not going to be long, but I will tell you that more and more, as we move on in this country, and we look at the last 50 years of achievement and accomplishment, and even some failures along the way, we have to reflect on the everyday person who had to live the life in this great country of ours. I know many of you have seen the recent movie Selma. I know many of you are either planning to go see the movie Selma. But when I speak of, of the people of goodwill, that movie depicts exactly the kind of environment that was needed and the kind of environment that we're going to need to move forward as a country. If you start talking about just black achievement of what black leaders did, and only sticking with that as we continue to move forward, and not bring in the countless of individuals that are unsung heroes and sheroes that took part in allowing this very rich history to be positive and to allow families to persevere. Many individuals start with their civil rights or black history when they talk about the Emancipation Proclamation, but it goes further back than that. And I am not a PhD in history, but I will tell you that if it wasn't for individuals who were non-black, who knew, God-fearing individuals, who knew what to do and how to do it and to be able to fill their lives, then maybe this celebration wouldn't even be taking place here today. I think it's important to know that as we talked with our children 
about 1964 Civil Rights Act. I mean, 1963-64 uh, uh, Civil Rights Act, 19. 63 uh, Civil Rights Act, so 64 Voting Rights Act. We have to talk about those individuals who had to step out of their comfort zone to be able to allow African Americans to vote in this country. I had a discussion yesterday with my mother about my discussion here today with you. It's Congresswoman Carrie Meek and She's doing outstanding. She'll be um, actually 89 this year at the end of April. And she's an educator and a trailblazer, but a woman who could not vote when she was a young woman, a woman who lived in a segregated South, a woman that gave children vision, like many educators do, that tomorrow will be better, and that the possible but the impossible for her is the possible for them. And I shared with her, I said, Mom, let's just talk about the sacrifices because I believe as we look at the rich history of not only African Americans, but those who took part in that history, we have to look at the fact that people had to step out of their comfort zone. Someone had to take a vote that was going to be unpopular back home. Someone was going to be disrespected in some way. Leaders, decision makers had to make decisions that were unpopular and uncomfortable. And so I think as we start looking at not only what has happened in the past, but what's going to happen in the future, because as a father, I can tell you that the prayer of any grandmother or father or grandfather is that their children and grandchildren have better opportunities than what they've had. There are many contributors to this rich history that we celebrate today, but the everyday individual took part in that. Know the names of the leaders, but how about those that are not in the history books? Let's talk about those that are unsung. Those individuals that took away from their weekends, those individuals that work 12 hours but still found a reason to go out and register people to vote. Those individuals that knew what it mean to catch the early bus in the morning. Those individuals who could not read but understood that they did not have the luxury to be able to say, I'm tired, uh, I've gone to work and I've gone to church and then that's it. Those individuals that prepared themselves to those grandmothers and to those grandfathers and to those parents who work punch in and punch out jobs so that their children will have an opportunity to be able to afford a higher education. Those parents that go to graduations with tears streaming down their face of witnessing in their lifetime, their bloodline walking across the stage prepared and ready to lead, doing something that they were not able to do, need to be economically or because of segregation. Those are the individuals that should be remembered when we start looking at and reflecting on Black History Month. Second point, I think identification of who you are and who we are, key to the future of this country. Not just a community, not just a neighborhood, but to this country. As United States Congressman, I had an opportunity to travel the world. I'm not talking about with a camera uh, uh, around my neck and, and um, sitting down in restaurants in Europe and Africa and the Middle East. I'm talking about going out to see our men and women that are in harm's way, that are serving our country, that allow us to take for granted the very freedom that we live under. I'm talking about those individuals that 
went to high school and, and, and enlisted in the armed, for, armed forces and that are out there carrying out the orders of this government that we vote to make decisions. Going to visit them has, and I've been to Iraq, and I've been to Afghanistan, and I've been to Pakistan, and I've, I've, I've been around. I've been to um, some places that, uh, I've, been to, I've been on the streets of Fallujah in Iraq, some of the uh, some of the things that we're reading about right now I've been to uh, Jordan I've been all over and I think when you start looking at the people of goodwill and you start looking at the generation the people who will be here 50 years from now with salt and pepper hair these individuals will be a different class those individuals will be a different class of Americans there'll be a class of Americans that have gone through similar experiences. You will have individuals that have been financially challenged, but some folks say the next oppression is economic oppression, the have and the have nots. You will have individuals that went to school together because as I talk to those young men and women that are serving, many times we look at our historical black colleges, but our historical black colleges today, and I'm a visiting fellow at Howard University now, and I lecture on Howard University's campus four times a month. I fly back and forth to go up there. I'm looking at a, not a segregated lecture hall, but an integrated lecture hall. Because higher education is something that all must achieve to be able to compete. Not only will we talk about compete here for a job locally, but complete, compete, compete with, the, with the global market place and with other countries. Or, or in the same arena with other countries and in their workforce. But those individuals 50 years from now would experience some of the same, would have had some of the same experiences It will be a different kind of America. And when we talk about the people of goodwill, if you go watch that movie Selma, you will see individuals that stood on the front line when we were most successful in the movement for equality and for equalization and for an opportunity to vote and for an opportunity to stand up for what you believe in, for an opportunity to be able to take advantage of the services and opportunities that the government provide because you're a taxpayer. It took the people of goodwill coming together to make our history rich. So I do believe that there's a bright future. And as we continue to watch public television and seeing the different um, um, uh, documentaries that will be uh, broadcast over the next uh, 20 something odd days. You will hear great speeches. You'll hear about a great struggle. You'll hear about those that laid down their lives. You know, you, you'll hear about some achievement. But I want you to think about, and I close with this, I want you to think about your role in the president. See, Dr. King really wasn't revered until he was assassinated. And then the country's mood was totally different. We take for granted the president. We take for granted the historians within our own family. And I talk about my mother because I'm a mother's boy at heart. I wouldn't have gone to Florida A&M if it wasn't for my mother. My mother, I was on my way to Louisville. I was playing football. James, you know, this was up here at that point. You know, I thought I was a big guy, you know, all-county football player. And I was on my way, because it was when Howard Schnellenberger left the University of Miami and went to Louisville, and he called me and said, Kendrick, I have a full scholarship for you if you want to come to Louisville. Went up there, looked around, walked in the stadium, walked down the field, was like, yes. I got back. My mom said, your sister Lucia went to Bennett. Your sister Sheila went to Spelman. None of my children went to Florida a &M. And with me being a mama's boy, I said, mama, I'll go to Florida a &M. So that's how I ended up there. But so many times I share with my children that we take her for granted because we get to see her. We're blessed to see her every day. 
but she's a national treasure. She is someone who has gone from being a daughter of a sharecropper to serving in a state legislature when she was a little girl, could not walk in the Capitol building because the color of her skin when she was a Girl Scout, baking brownies and cookies for the legislature that God would have it that she would be a member of one day, would be the first African-American female to make it to the state Senate, would be the first African-American since Reconstruction to make it to Congress at the age of 66. I share her story because that story lives within your family. Grandmothers, grandfathers, uncles, aunts, their experience is unlike your experience. Your life is different because of them. And so I think that it's important, ladies and gentlemen, as we look at this black history, it's okay to talk about those individuals that are in our history books. But it's also important that you keep those individuals engaged. Pick those civil rights fighters that are within your own family. Take them out. Make them feel appreciated. Learn from them. And once you learn from them, then you will be able to teach your children and friends and other people of goodwill. So, James, I said I wasn't going to be a visiting preacher because you know that that means when the visiting preacher comes that you know they say I'm not going to be long. You know to get comfortable, and I'm not. But I just want to say, good people of Miramar people of goodwill. If you're non-black and you're here today and someone asks you, where were you, I mean, what, 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 that was a black history thing, what were you doing there? You tell them I'm a person of goodwill, that I'm a person that believe in community, that I'm a person that believe in this country, that everyone should be treated equally and everyone should be, to be provided with an opportunity based on their qualifications. No one asks for special treatment everyone pray and ask for equal treatment as you continue to celebrate this day as you continue to see these aspiring individuals that are running to lead this city i met so many candidates today i don't i don't i'm a, <laughs> God, I, I don't know what's going on I'm not a mayor. Yeah, i made so many candidates today i don't know what's going on but as you start to look at the future of this city and of our community and our country. I want you to think about what role will you play in your own family in galvanizing and honoring this mom, Black History Mom, of treating everyone like they should be treated and hopefully educating the next generation on their responsibility to make sure that this community is strong, that our state is strong, that this country is strong, and that spirit will lead on to other parts of the world that have to catch up with the achievements that we've made here in this great country of the United States of America. Thank you so very much, City of Miramar. I look forward to continuing to come back to the city.